Hello, FBC. Salinas, is Pastor John coming to you with another edition of the Midweek Refresher video, where I desire to do two things. Number one, provide you information. Number two, provide you inspiration in the middle of your week. Certainly hope your week is going well. And if not, may this video serve as a source of encouragement, as well as a reminder that our Lord is with us, that he cares for us, that he will not let us down. You'll notice I'm speaking a little bit more rapidly than usual. It's because there's a lot going on. And so right now, Vacation Bible School is happening, and it has been a great experience thus far as the children hear about developing a friendship with God and how much God cares for them and desires to be in their lives. And so the theme is scuba, diving deep into a friendship with God. It's been a great time. Lorraine and her crew continue to do a great job with Vacation Bible School and communicating the truth of a God who cares for people whether we realize it or not. And so we've had a wonderful time. Keep praying for Vacation Bible School as it continues on through Thursday night, all right? So, so that's the first announcement. Second announcement is this, is that this upcoming Saturday, we have our block party. It goes from 4 to 7 p.m. in the front parking lot. It's a wonderful opportunity to invite friends as well as neighbors, as well as coworkers, as well as whoever, inviting people to this great event where they get to interact with people at the church as well as they'd like to take a tour they can do that there'll be a little uh, tour guide and as far as a tour guide i mean a, a pamphlet that they get to do these different things the children get to do these different things and get get stickers for that and there'll be food there will be a great experience of different games, live music, balloon twisting, and cotton candy, and ice cream. It was going to be a great time. I guarantee you that. It's from 4 to 7 in the front parking lot. Thank you to those who are going to be helping out. If you'd like to help out, please let us know. We have plenty of things that uh, we would love to have you help us with. That would be great. So it's from 4 to 7 this Saturday. This Sunday is going to be part 2 of Compassion Sunday. This last Sunday on the 16th, we had the opportunity to sponsor children. I want to tell you this, we still have nine children that need to be sponsored. And so I'm asking you, if you would be interested in doing this, that would be a great thing. These nine children would be directly impacted by the church that we're helping launch in Bolivia. And so the table would be set out again in the lobby. Please stop by. Pick a, pick a child and let us, uh, let us as a group uh, not only pray for these people, but also get involved as best we can in their lives, all right? So that's going to happen again this upcoming Sunday, the 23rd, all right? So want you to know about that. And then, parents of young families, I need you to know something, that in the month of July, we will not have Kids Zone, nor will we have the nursery available. We're going to give volunteers a break, a time for them to be able to sort of rest and recover. They do a wonderful job. We will continue to have the Wigglers, and that will be a wonderful experience for those, for those children that fall into that age gap of age span for the Wigglers. And so that'll continue to happen, but there will be no nursery, nor will they be kid zone in the month of July, all right? So thank you to those volunteers that help in the children's ministry. You deserve a break, and we look forward to that break happening, all right? So, so that's it for the informational portion of this. And I also, oh, real quickly, just want to remind you of this. We gather for prayer every Thursday at 1030 in the Fireside Room. And so love to have you join us for that as we get ready to do some new things and some different things here in the coming months that we're praying through and asking God to say, and in essence, we're saying, Lord, what's next? All right. So I invite you to be a part of that as you pray with us on Thursdays at 1030 a.m., Love to have you here at the Fireside Room. If you cannot be with us at the Fireside Room, take some time Thursdays at 1030 to pray for us wherever you may be. Now let's get to the inspirational portion of this. And I got to confess to you, I don't know how exactly inspirational this might be. I'm in a weird place as I'm working through, as I'm doing my personal devotions. I'm in this, in this weird place in Exodus where... Moses and Aaron meet with Pharaoh, it seems like almost on a daily basis, 
and they say, listen, you need to let our people go so they can go worship. And Pharaoh simply doesn't allow that to happen. And because he doesn't allow that to happen, his heart gets increasingly hardened. And, and if you've read the story before, you know that Pharaoh's heart gets really hard and he gets really, he just, just doesn't want to have anything to do with what God wants to do. And I think the reason why I use the word, it's a weird time for me, is that at times in my life, I find hmm, my heart gets a little hardened, gets a little bit rough, gets a little bit cold at times. And there's this encounter that happens in Exodus chapter 10, and it caught my attention. Listen to this. The plague of darkness has happened, and it's the last plague before the big one, which is the plague on the firstborn. It's the plague of darkness, and it's three days, three days of complete darkness in Egypt. Now, what's interesting is that it remained light where God's people were, where the Israelites were. It remained light where the Hebrews were, I should say. Complete darkness for three days. We're told this in verse 21, Then Yahweh said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky so that darkness spreads over Egypt. And notice this next phrase, Darkness that can be felt. That's dark. That's really dark. How dark was it? So Moses stretched out his hand toward the sky, and total darkness covered all of Egypt for three days. No one could see anyone else or move about for three days. Yet all the Israelites had light in the places where they lived. Darkness that can be felt. That's scary. That's a tough place to be. And again, God is trying to get Pharaoh's attention, but he's also doing something else here. Letting Pharaoh know that, Pharaoh, you may think that you are the source of light, that you are the one who has control, but you're not the source of light. I am, and I'm going to remove that light and help you understand that I am the Lord of light. So this happens, and then this happens in verse 27. But Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he was not willing to let the people go. Pharaoh said to Moses, get out of my sight. Make sure you do not appear before me again. That day you see my face, you will die. Pharaoh says, I don't want to ever see you again. And if I do see you, it's not going to go well for you reason why I'm bringing this up and the reason why I said I don't know how much of an inspiration this will be, I think there are times in our lives when we're in some pretty dark places and God's trying to get our attention and God's trying to get our attention and we simply go deeper into the darkness. We have people come into our lives that say, hey, I'm here for you. Hey, I'm, I'm concerned about what's going on in your life. I'm concerned about why you're doing this and why you're doing that. And we say, get away, get away, get away. And all that happens is that we go deeper into the darkness. And notice what Moses does here in verse 29. Moses says, just as you say, Moses replied, I will never appear before you again. Boom. The reason why I find this time in in, in walking through Exodus a little bit strange for me is, is I know that there are times in my life where I'm aligned with God and doing what he wants and, and I understand better what he's trying to do and how he's trying to align my life with his, with his will, with his ways of loving people, of proclaiming his truth, of being available to him. And it's a joyous time. There's light, there's joy, there's peace. But then there are also other times in my life where it's a little dark. It's a little bit of, a, of, of just me struggling with this situation or that situation in my own personal life. And there are people that are in my life that care for me so much, my wife, my children, other friends. And at times they see what's going on and they say, hey, I'm here to help you. And I say, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I don't need your help. I think as I wrap this up, I want us to think about this. How are you responding 
to those times when God is reaching out to you in your own personal darkness, the darkness that can be felt. How are you responding to that? Because I know this, that God puts people in our lives who care about us and who want the best for us and are saying, hey, I'm here for you. How are you responding to them? Will you accept the fact that they're there to help get you back into the light? The Lord said this, Jesus said this, I am the light of the world. He's the one. He's the one that shines light into our darkness, and he's the one that rescues us. And it's my prayer that in those times in our lives when we're going through some darkness, that we would not shove him away and say, I'm done. But that we would say, Lord, shine your light in my life and help me see what you want me to see and be who you want me to be. That's the type of God we have. He wants us to walk in the light. I love you. I'm praying for you, and if you need help in finding that light, if you're going through some dark times, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to sit with you and talk with you and listen to you and, and pray with you because we have a great God who truly wants us to walk in the light. God bless you. Have a great rest of the day. Have a great rest of the week. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.